Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zim. <laughs> I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at a new component called the keyboard. So let's go to some code now. And uh, this is the keyboard example. You can actually find it at zimjazz.com slash keyboard. And we will have a look through this and do some modifications of it, etc. So it's a slightly different version, but here we're going to open it in the browser and let's take a look. So here it is, and we can type. And there I'm asking for an uppercase D, A, and N space, uppercase Z, E, and N. Cool. And note that if you click down and hold or press and hold, then you get a bunch of uppercases. Hopefully this isn't making you Z too much. If you press within here, you can get this thing and sort of move it around. Remember, this is for mobile primarily, like so. And then you can use the backspace to delete that and put in the letter I. And let's uh, click into here and go backspace, backspace, and go M. Zim! Yes. Uh, some other tricks you can do. If I hold on the E, you get a bunch of E's. If I hold on the I, you get a bunch of I's. Same with the O's and so forth. I didn't choose it. No. And there are the O's. Oh, with an accent. Um, you can close this down and here we'll bring it back up again. And oh, the numbers here. So this is your secondary keyboard as well as a one out of two. This is a two out of two to get various characters. <laughs> Isn't that a yen, yen symbol? Dan Yen. <laughs> nice. Uh, right. And anything else in here? Well, we can do some modifications. So let's see some modifications now. How about? We'll just close that one down. We'll come into the code, the Zim keyboard. We're running Zim 7 there. You'll need Zim 7. This is the new Zim 7, Zim HEP. And we come on in. We're making two labels, uh, text 1, text 2. And that's the thing about a keyboard. You, well, you've got a choices, I suppose. You can just ask for a keyboard. So here we are asking for a keyboard right here. And we could use the keyboard key down event uh, that captures an event object, and then we can ask for E dot letter, and that will tell us what key was pressed in the keyboard. But in general, it works well with a label, and a label is a little bit of a different um, thing. Uh, first of all, why, why do we have this keyboard? Well, if you use a text area, te drop back one more time, a canvas. The canvas doesn't have text. Uh, it has, it's an image. So when we present text, it's actually an image of, of text. Whereas HTML has text fields. I mean, yes, okay, fine. Way back there somewhere, it is still an image because it's on the screen, but uh, it's selectable text, editable, all that kind of stuff. We don't have that on the canvas traditionally. Zim has provided a text area component that overlays an HTML text field and pretends that it's on the canvas as you move the canvas or scale things. It will scale with it. Uh, a little, little tricky to do. That's based on the CreateJS DOM element. Um, but uh, when you use a text area and pull up a, a keyboard from the system, from the mobile device's system, that often will collapse the rest of the screen. And sometimes I found that it doesn't come back properly. And despite trying and testing and testing and trying, it can just be a little bit trying, <laughs> we'll call it, uh, to be able to, to have to test all that stuff. It's almost not worth it, it, it seems. So this uh, and, and Frank Loss in the Netherlands came up with uh, an idea that, hey, rather than rely on the system keyboard, because that also has to rely on a text area, and both of those things aren't quite the canvas. So he built a keyboard on the canvas, and we said, hey, yeah, let's put that in Zim. So we brought that here into Zim, and that's what we're looking at. Now we can quite easily, without any worry, put letters into a text field and you can, or, well it's not a text field really it's it's a label so we're adjusting a zim label here i suppose you could put letters into the a text area uh, but you just got to watch that if as soon as you 
press into the text area and undoubtedly the uh, system keyboard will come up. So it's almost like, hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use a text label then, or sorry, a text area. Uh, let's just use a label and let's use our own keyboard. And I think that system will be a bit easier to manage. Now, currently though, there are some drawbacks. One is, uh, it's still not real text, it's an image. And at the moment, it's not wrapping. We uh, don't have the wrap support, but I can see that coming up. We've been sort of so busy getting Zip 7 launched, a whole bunch of stuff around it, that that I didn't do the extra coding to do multi-line uh, code. So uh, here we are. We've got a label. And, and by the way, this label will keep on growing forever, though. And if you don't want it growing forever, let's just drop this down and I can show you how to limit the length of our label. And that is with the... Um, do, 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 what the heck was that called? Um, now that I've said length, I've forgotten. Let's go to the docs. So I'm opening up a browser, hitting the docs, docs, and typing in, well, it could be a label, a label. It is called the line width. And it also, if we we're in here in the docs, we'll go to the keyboard. And there's a message uh, here. Use uh, this one right here. Note the width of the label can be set by the label's line width parameter. And currently, multi-line labels are not supported. So let's uh, do that. What was it? Line width colon. How about we make it 200? And let's uh, do a test. Open in browser. So that was the top one here. E e e e e e e e e e e e e. There it is, stopping at 200. And if we backspace, we can <coughs> go at it again. All right, so that's um, that's how you can limit the width if you want. Otherwise, this thing will just uh, keep on going, etc. If you hold down the, the delete key, it, um, it adds letters. The Currently, the if you hold down these keys, they don't do that, but um, so be it. All right. So coming back, we've got our text fields there, text and text one, text two. We've set the background color of them, by the way, so that we can we can see them. And we position them on the stage. Then we've said, hey, our keyboard pass in those two labels. If you have only one label, if, if you want, we can only operate on text one, for instance. And we'll refresh here. Uh, there it is now, text two, I can't press into, but I can operate in text one. And note when we did that, that we only had to pass in the label. You could, if you wanted, pass in an array, but uh, we don't have to. But if we want two of them, then we use the array. Let's play around with the, well, before we play around with it, let's just see the rest of it. There was our keyboard event, which we saw on key down. We're collecting a letter. So if we looked at the console, we'd be seeing the letters we press. If you hit the delete, then you see D-E-L for your letter. We are capturing a couple events, a mouse down event on the text, on the text fields. Uh, sorry, not text field, labels whatever. And we're storing those because we're going to remove those and add them again. So now once the, we're calling activate in each case. So once we pressed on the text, we're activating, which will show the keyboard. So a keyboard much like the uh, pane, the Zim pane and the waiter, both those have show and hide. And there might be another component that does that too. I can't remember for sure. Uh, but it, it's because when we show, we've also got to think about the, it's not just adding, we're not just adding the keyboard to the stage or to wherever. We're also adding a cursor or manipulating a, a few things there. So we're doing a few more things in, in the show uh, as well as adding the keyboard to the stage, positioning it as well. When we do that, when it's there, we no longer want the mouse down events. So we're turning the text one, text two events off. And then we are asking, we, we don't have to, this is optional. So if I comment out the showing of the keyboard to start, then we don't see a keyboard. And this might be very well be how, how you have it. You have some an input field that you want 
to receive something, maybe somebody's typing in their name or something, then they can press on this thing and up pops the keyboard and they can start in on their name. All right, so back to here, we started off with the keyboard showing. Oh, and by the way, if you wanted to show the second keyboard, you can say show one. So this is, you can receive an index. So now when we refresh here, the, uh, well, let me just show you, uh, this is, I'm gonna, re gonna refresh, whoop, and there, it starts showing in the second, second one there. That would obviously show in the first, but so would that. Uh, we are capturing a close event from the keyboard. So when we close the keyboard, then we want to add those mouse down events back to the text fields. So this example and the live example that you'll see at zimjs.com slash keyboard, take you through a pretty common system where we're able to type into a text field using the keyboard. Nice, huh? Now let's uh, have a look at how we can personalize or customize this keyboard. Personalize it, customize it. We will convert to the Zim Duo technique of the configuration object there. And this one is called, uh, in. let's see, what are those things called? They're called, Labels, so labels, colon, are those, comma, why don't we set the corner, corner, colon, zero, and we'll save that up, then take a look here. So there's a nice sort of modern looking square keyboard, I like that too. And if we want to, we can drag, colon, true. So set this up to drag, and we refresh here. It adds a little handle that we can pick up and, and drag it down out of the way if we want, or up. Do you like that? And let's see, there's the color and all sorts of different colors, as, as you might imagine. So how about the uh, color colon frame dot orange, maybe? How about green? And let's take a look at a green keyboard. Nice. Now you see these are the special keys right here. Uh, well, aside from that, I suppose there, this one, the two, these are the special uh, keys. So they're a bit darker and we call that the shade alpha or something like that. In this case with the green, it's a little bit too dark for me. So I will say shade alpha colon point one. And let's see what that looks like. So right now they're that darkness, which isn't the end of the world, but now they're slightly lighter. And maybe I like that better. Uh, if you want the text color to be black, for instance, text color colon black. Oh, uh, well, we'll go frame dot black. And here's what that would look like. There's black text. And you can change the shift color to and the shift hold color there is what those are called. These ones automatically go a little bit lighter. Uh, so be it. Okay, uh, there, I suppose that's probably good enough. If you look at the documentation on the keyboard, just a few more things, labels, colors, text color, shift color, shift hold color, place color. Oh, that's the color of uh, these things right here. Oh, typed in some E's. Uh, these things that pop up, you can change the color of those as well. And uh, whether you want the X. So, sorry, we were looking in the docs there. Uh, that is called place close. So if you turn the place close false, you see how it's got this close there. When you've got the drag, it's all right to, to remove that because if, if you want to get rid of these, otherwise you can't get rid of those, you could click here and get rid of them. But when you don't have the drag, there's nowhere really you can click without actually changing a letter, so I added uh, this little close button here to be able to close it. I think as a default, that's probably fine. Oh, we were still looking at the docs. Docs, it's because I put the docs in the wrong place there. Uh, shadow colors, great container. Oh, if you want to add it to another thing or a different stage, so just be careful there. This automatically opens up on the default frame stage. If for some reason you needed it to open up on a different stage, then you need to specify that different stage right there. Oh, a margin. 
as well. So if we set the margin to zero, here's what it looks like. Margin colon zero. And I'm going to take back the colors as well. I don't really like those colors all that much. So we save that up and refresh here. Uh, there she be. Now the margin, you see it goes right against the stage, like so. And that, my friends, is a look at the new keyboard class. Thank you very much for Frank Loss out in the Netherlands for all the hard work and a nice design on that keyboard. That's great. And we have a new component in Zim 7 called Keyboard. Hopefully that works uh, well for you. Uh, here we are. At the end of a Zim bubbling. You guys have a great day or night. Uh, look forward to hearing you uh, from you. And if you ha if you're using Zim, come on out to zimjs.com/slack, S-L-A-C-K, and join our Slack team. We would love to hear from you there as well. Ciao. Have a great day.